Good day everyone, I'm Nina Marie C. Binalay from BSN2B and the assigned topic to me is all about the Philippine Bilingual Education Policy or what we call BEP. But before we proceed to the Philippine Bilingual Education Policy, let us first talk about what is the content of the provision of Article 14, Section 7 of the 1987th Constitution states. So... The language provision in the 1987th Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines, which are embodied in Article 14, Section 6, and 7, provide the legal basis for the various language policies that are being implemented in the country. The ratification of the above-mentioned Constitution resolved the issue on what the national language is since the 1935 and 1973 Philippine charters were not clear about this. So, to make it clear, here are the provisions. Section 6, the national language of the Philippines is Filipino. Is, as it evolves, it shall be further developed and enriched on the basis of existing Philippine and other languages. Next, for purposes of communication and instruction, the official language of the Philippines are Filipino and until otherwise provided by law. So, English, that's why the regional language are the auxiliary official language in the regions and shall serve as auxiliary media of instruction therein. So, let's start to the Philippine Bilingual Education Policy. Mm. So, consistent with the 1987 constitutional mandate and of declared policy of the National Board of Education or what we call NBE on bilingualism in the schools, NBE Resolution Number no. 73-7 Series of 1973, the Department of Education, Culture and Sports or what we call DECS promulgated its language policy. Next, what is the first policy implemented in 1974? So, the policy was first implemented in 1974 when DECS issued Department Order No. 25, Series of 1974, titled Implementing Guidelines for the Policy on Bilingual Education, which served as a basis for the institutionalization of bilingual education policy in basic education. Next, in the Philippines, bilingual education is defined operationally as the separate use of Filipino and English as the media of instruction in specific subject areas because bilingual education is the teaching of academic content in two languages, in native and a second language. That's why in Philippines, our native language is Filipino and our second language is English. Next, as embodied in Department of Education, Culture and Sports Order Number no. 25, the word Filipino changed to Filipino in 1987 and it shall be used as medium of instruction in social studies or social sciences, music, arts, physical education, home economics, um, practical arts, and char character education. English, on the other hand, is allocated to science, mathematics, and technology subject and it's true, right? The same subject allocation is provided in 1987 policy on bilingual education, which is disseminated through Department Order No. 52, Series of 1987. Next, the policy on bilingual education aims at the achievement of competence in both Filipino and English at the national level through the teaching of both languages and their use as media of instruction at all levels. The regional languages shall be used as auxiliary languages in grade 1 and 2. The aspiration of the Philippine, Filipino nation sorry, is to have its citizens possess skills in Filipino to enable them to perform their functions and duties in order to meet the needs of the country in the community of nations. So this means this policy really wanted to produce students who are competent speaker in both Filipino and English because in the long run, that would benefit our country, the development of our country, because the more they are competent in this language, the more they can perform well in their duties that will help our country grow even more. Next, the goals of bilingual education policy. So, the goals of the bilingual education policy shall be, first, enhance learning through two languages to achieve quality education as called for the 1987 Constitution. Second, 
the propagation of Filipino as a language of literacy. Third, the development of Filipino as a linguistic symbol of national unity and identity. Fourth, the cultivation and elaboration of Filipino as a language of a scholarly discourse, that is to say, its continuing intellectualization. And fifth, the maintenance of English as an international language for the Philippines and as a non-exclusive language of science and technology. So that is the end of my report. Thank you.